calculating those too. Liana's going around with a cool heart bucket. Um, really, that just pays for uh, everything that we've had to um, pay for to get this uh, event on today. So we'd love it if you can help us out there. Um, so I'll now introduce Simon Brown, who's an organiser with um, It's Our Future, uh, which is opposing uh, the TPP um, treaty. Simon. Hopefully this only take about five minutes. Well, we've had coal mining, we've had gold mining, and now we've got water mining. Yeah. And the big story here today is Ocean Cloud because there is a potential threat to our city's water security, and the council are going to look at it, we're going to support that, because they're going to take nine billion litres, that's as much as 70,000 homes, and they want to put down a deep bore, and how deep is it? How do we know when it's really deep? Because the Avon will run dry. Shame, shame, yeah. shame. But there's a bigger story, because other people will talk more about the same. The bigger story is this, because we now have over 75 water bottling plants in New Zealand that's growing every day, and it continues to grow unchecked. The aquifers of Northwood, Hawke's Bay, Ashburton, and now Christchurch are all becoming under threat. And so this is much bigger than just Christchurch, this is now nationwide. And there's an even bigger story than that, because this is not an accident. Because while individual corporations are taking water, it is actually part of an established Chinese government policy to ensure food and water security for 1.4 billion people. It's no secret that they have been buying up attractive parts of Africa, Australia, and New Zealand agricultural assets to protect their own people. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's a smart move. But we have to be smart too. We don't need to be trodden on. Yeah. Now, this is all sounding slightly xenophobic, so I want to clear this up. And stick with me on this one, because you might get lost for a bit. Well, trust me, we'll get there. Imagine a country which is exclusively for gay people. Yay! Yeah. The name of this country is called Gator. And they're very short on water, so they come to New Zealand, they put in some water bottling plants, they ship it back to Gaydor, and they pay us nothing. And I'm so I go and says, well guys, I don't know about this, is this a fair deal? I, I'm not so sure. So the Gaydorians say, you know what they're going to say about me, don't you? You know what they're going to call me, don't you? They're going to call me homophobic! This guy just hates gays. Well, that's not the case. The case is it doesn't matter whether it's the Chinese, the people from Gaydor or Little Green Men from Mars, we're here to protect our water for us first. Yeah. Now last year most of us were fairly euphoric because finally the Labour Green government got in there and decided to clean up this mess on water. So what have they done in the last year? Nothing. Pretty well nothing. And there's two reasons for that. The first reason is right now in Beijing we are trying to renegotiate the China Free Trade Agreement, I got this from Professor Kelsey, to get a more favourable deal for our exporters. Nothing wrong with that. But they don't want to antagonise the Chinese. So stopping new water bottling plants is off the table, cutting their water back, or putting a levy on bottled water is pretty much off the table for now. And the second reason that nothing's happening is that the China Free Trade Agreement contains the same insidious ISDS provisions as the TPPA. You know the ones where if we break a contract, a permit or a licence and reduce their profits, they can sue us. So if we turn the tap back, they can sue us. If we put a, a, a levy on bottled water, they can sue us. And that's what's holding things up at the moment. So we've got rampant water bottling plants going in, we've got labour not doing very much, what can we do about this? The first thing we can do is lobby our MPs to remove the ISD clauses from our free trade agreements. Because around the world, most of these are coming out and it's something we can do and we need to push that. Resource consents have to be publicly notified. So scientists, iwi, community can have their own say about their own place. We need a national register of water bottling plants who they are, whether they are, who owns them, and how much they're taking. 
We need to re-establish local and regional councils' right to turn the tap back in a drought or under climate change without the threat of being sued. And we need to re-establish the sovereignty of central government to put a fair price, a royalty on premium export water without the threat of being sued. The revenue from water from sustainable aquifers and only sustainable ones at 10 cents a litre for 75 Watley Bikening plants, 32 billion litres, would net our government $3.2 billion a year. That's what we're missing out on at the moment. It's serious money. So we need to get rid of those clauses in the FTAs. And it's a big job. It's David and Goliath. You know? Somebody said to me, gee, Si, man, we need some hope. And I said, oh, I don't know about hope. What's hope, you know? Oh, I hope climate change goes away. What are you doing, bro? Oh, yeah, no, nah, it's not too good. I hope it goes away too. But I don't think hope's going to cut it anymore. We don't need hope. What we need is courage. Because courage produces action, and action produces results. And if we're speaking about courage... If we, while we're speaking about courage, let's have a thought for Jan Brunya from Ashburton who two years ago said we're not going to have a Chinese water bottling plant sucking Ashburton dry. And she organised a community, ordinary people like us. And you know what? We did stop the water bottling plant. We did bung the bore. And not only that, we got rid of the mayor as well. So we're getting the other words. Watch out, he can, because if you keep rubber stamping this crap, we're coming for you next. Yeah. 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 And we can and we should support Vicky Buck and the Christchurch City Council to protect our water security in Christchurch. Yeah. We can, we should, and we must put pressure on our MPs to get rid of those ISDS clauses so we can protect their water. Now the most important thing in terms of human rights, I think, the most basic of all human rights is the right to water. And protecting our water security under climate change will become more and more critical. Make no mistake, say we are under threat. So I want to ask you guys a question. Question number one. Will we allow the privatisation of New Zealand public water supplies for private gain through corporations? No. no! No bloody way! Absolutely not. And question number two, will we allow the uncontrolled expansion of water bottling plants that suck us dry and pay us nothing? No! Absolutely not. So you know what? It's our country, it's our water, and it's our city. We set the agenda, we make the rules, and we come first. Yeah. And that's what sovereignty is, people. That's what sovereignty is. Thank you very much.